What is going on, everybody? Hope you're all having a great day. I know that me and Chiefs did a rundown, but I wanted to bring our guy on who we've been working with, uh, who's really, really a sharp mind and has put a lot put together some really incredible analytical analytic tools that we are going to be using going forward. And uh, I think that it's uh, it's great to get him on finally. And Justin, this is Justin Goldberg. And uh, we're going to be talking through uh, today's slate, using it sort of as an idea. And eventually we'll get more into the to the weeds without being able to guys show you guys actual screenshots of the of the images and whatnot. But uh, in the meantime, we're going to have you Justin talk through it, just using his, you know, talking about his process and the way he looks at things and the way he dives into things. Um, but Justin, great to have you on. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, I feel like it's uh, overdue. Yeah, man, of course. Uh, I'm, I'm stoked to uh, to dig into some numbers, man. I love talking ball and, um, you know, really excited to uh, to be doing some more work uh, with the true DFS team. So um, hopefully in the back end, you know, like you mentioned, um, you know, we've got some kind of tools that we're trying to uh, to massage a little bit to make uh, um, everything, everybody else's process easier on a daily basis, too. So, um yeah, I'm uh, I'm stoked to to get into ball on a daily basis, and um, yeah, man, let's uh, yeah. let's hit it. Let's jump on into it. So we're gonna go game by game, and you're gonna talk a little bit about because I because I know you do the deep dive on on the on the pitchers, and we you know we talk about it in Discord, and those of you guys are probably familiar for, with Justin and Discord. Uh, your Shobo Baggins over there, right? And, and our Discord. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, nickname nickname's just Goldie. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's been me. Nice. All right. Well, so let's get it. Let's get into it. We'll go game by game. There's a lot of top pitching arms on the slate and me and Sheets talked a little bit about if you want a dumpster dive, maybe this, you know, I'm trying to go back and forth, whether it's the right slate or not to do that. And right off the bat, I mean, we do have some, a little bit of weather concerns here. Um, but assuming this game just is a full go ahead to play, what are you looking at? If anything from this one, because I think, I think people are going to get onto the Cubs a little bit and I don't have any problem with that. I also don't have any problem with, if it was maybe, maybe if it was a core slate and we really liked that or something, I would be considering, I'd be open to the idea of taking a shot on Kyle Bradish has a fairly decent leash and it's the Cubs. That's basically my entire justification for it. Um, and he's 5,100. So what are your thoughts on this and uh, talk about the pitching and then maybe if you are interested in either of the stacks. Yeah, for sure. Um, I kind of agree with you. I think, uh, I will probably, I looked into it briefly about the weather, you know, might have a couple of pop-up storms, whatever, but should should play i think um and yeah it's uh as of right now not showing a ton of uh interest you know from uh from the public on the cubs but uh you know outside of like Contreras or whatever right who's who's typically always popular but yeah i kind of agree uh bradish um he's he's been struggling uh he he's he's just got to kind of a uh, a limited pitch mix right he throws a cutter and a slider mm -hmm. um and like he's got a, a change and a curveball that he used sparingly, but um, they haven't really shown a ton of value for him just yet. Um, and the the cutter and the slider are basically flat, you know, so there's not a ton of movement on him, and that really leads to all of the power that he's been giving up. So he's been getting hit really, really hard mm -hmm. uh, from the right side of the plate. Um, he's given up eight dingers in 33 innings this this season alone. Yep. Uh, so. He's given up power um, and and a ton of hard contact, ton of barrels. So it's it's a really good spot for the Cubs. Mm -hmm. um, I would imagine that their ownership probably starts to drift upward throughout the day. But as of right now, I mean, they're all under, call it 10% uh, outside of Contreras. So a uh, really good spot for them. Um, and they're priced very well. So Schwindel, Wisdom, uh, you can absolutely get to these guys. Uh, Morel, I'm less bullish on. Um, at 4,300, but you can certainly get there. Hap, uh, certainly at 36, uh, like all these guys are playable. So a uh, really good spot for the Cubs. Um, and, and you can full stack them. You can mini stack them. I think that, I think it's a good spot. Um, yeah, I totally, I, I'm totally on board with you on that. I, I also agree yeah. that I think their ownership does end up increasing by the end of the day, especially depending on how their lineup shakes out. You never know when they all of a sudden bat Clint Frazier fifth, which they've done a few times this year. And then, yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. For sure. So you, so it just depends a little bit on that, even on what kind of value you get. But, um, but I hear you with Bradish. I do want to point out one thing I like to look at that I think sometimes people get stuck on pitchers, um, what, you know, what their results have been and what's been happening lately. Sometimes I, I, I poke holes in it because I, I, you know, Seattle is not like Seattle's a great team or anything, but they didn't exactly light them up either. But pitching in Boston and facing Tampa, having a bad start against Tampa Bay and the Yankees, 
Um, I, I can forgive some of these, some of these, this is just a much, much better matchup. So for I am sure. actually going to be weird and, and maybe throw Bradish into a lineup or two on the very low, very small buy-in uh, large field, but it's really just because it's the Cubs and it's a 5,100 pitcher who's th who throws, you know, between 80 and 90 pitches a game pretty much, unless he's getting completely rocked. So I, I, I am on board with, with the Cubs as a, as a mini stack or a full stack, but big slate, um, obviously the Cubs are not the greatest hitting team, so not going crazy with it. What are your thoughts on Thompson? Cause he's another guy who I actually think has some talent, but hasn't really, you know, we, we saw him throw 89 pitches finally the other day. Um, he's not, I, I don't think the leash is there enough. I don't think it's quite cheap enough for me to, to take a shot here, but I mean, it's kind of yeah. crazy. You look at his actual overall numbers and he's six and oh, with a 1.9 ERA, just like going back to old school numbers. It's just kind of crazy to think about. Um, this guy's like, you know, it, it, like they look like Cy Young numbers, but then you realize he's only pitching, you know, three to five innings a game. He did pitch out, yeah. of, I believe, at the beginning of the season. Um, what are your thoughts on Thompson? Are you interested in Baltimore at all? Uh, yeah, I, I like Baltimore. And unfortunately, like they're kind of a bad team, but they are trappy, man. I get to them all the time. Um, like I, I love playing Austin Hayes. I play the guy damn near every day. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, I like them, you know, they're, they're capable. They, they get on base um, and they're pesky at the plate They're This isn't the, the Orioles of old anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, at least, at least from an offensive standpoint where you could just attack them literally every single day. Um, their strikeout numbers are down. Their on base numbers are up and, you know, they got some, some good prospects that they finally brought up. So with Thompson, um, I agree with you. I, I don't think he's quite cheap enough uh, to, mm -hmm. to take a punt on a full slate here, but uh, guy's got four pitches that he can utilize that are, you know, providing okay value for him. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, some concerns for me come uh, with the command. Uh, he just doesn't have a ton of, of chase and he's got a well below average swinging strike rate and a well below average first pitch strike rate, you know? So yeah. uh, that, that, that puts him in some bad spots. And um, you know, th so that, that'd be my hesitation with him, but mostly it's because of the price. I think 67 is a little stiff for him in this spot in particular. So uh, if anything, I'd rather get to Baltimore um, probably a, a, a three stack, you know, I love Cedric at what 42 or 44 or whatever yeah. he is. Yeah, he is. Um, and like I said, Austin Hayes, I like, uh, you can play Rutch as well. Uh, he's probably a bit overpriced for now, but, um, it's probably an accurate price or close eventually, to it, but, yeah. but eventually he yeah. hasn't done anything to, 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 to be worthy of it, but I do yep. think eventually it's going to be a good price. I mean, this guy is super, super talented and I, I don't want to, I hate saying can't miss, but I, I don't think he's going to miss. I think this guy is going to be a, a top level catcher for years to come. So yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent. Yeah. Just a little early for him, I think. Uh, and the price is inflated just because he saw so mm -hmm. much ownership in the first couple of games when he came up. So, um, but he's, he's definitely playable in this spot. I mean, you can full on game stack here. If you, if, if, you know, if you're feeling yeah. up to it, that'll it with everybody so cheap, it really allows you to get, uh, you know, get to double top uh, on the mound if if you want to go like a Rodone, um, yep. Kyle Wright, or you know something like that. Uh, so that that you know these cheap guys, these cheap stack, unlock that. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's fine if you want to take that kind of route. But uh, yeah, no no Keegan for me today. Yeah, I understand that. Um, I do want to jump. So let's jump over to uh, Detroit and Pittsburgh, another game with a little bit of just weather concerns. I mean, we don't know where it's going to stand by the end of the day yet. It's early in the day still. Yeah. Um, if it plays, I love Scooble as a pivot off of some of the other top arms. Yeah. I, I think this is real. I think that I, I, I mean, I've said for a while, I expect this guy to be a great pitcher and he's really getting that. And on top of it, they've extended his, he's got a real leash. Now he's throwing over hundred pitches in three out of his last four starts. Um, we see that the you know the consistency even not to mention the, the the high ceiling, and you put him up against the Pittsburgh offense that is really just not not an especially exciting offense. Um, so I, I like I, I am very very high on uh, on Scooble today, and that's pretty much all I really want to do in this game. How about you? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, if uh, yeah, I, I love Scooble too. I kind of balk a little bit at the price. Um, he's still giving up quite a bit of hard contact to the right side of the plate, um, but he's not walking people. He's throwing strike one, and you know he's got an average swinging strike rate and, and killer K stuff. You know, and uh, the Pirates they'll whiff. You know, this is not a a very powerful offense over here. Um, but 
if uh, if you do get to Scooble, I think um, if you get to him with a you know a, a lot today, I, I think uh, adding in some Cabrian Hayes on the other side mm-hmm. is is probably pretty prudent. But outside of that, I mean, if you want to punt to Michael Chavis, I mean, the guy whiffs a ton, but uh, you know he can hit the ball a mile. So and, yep. and Scooble gives up power to the right side. So. Uh, he's been much, much better this season than he has in the past. So I agree with you. I think he's really dialing it in. Um, and he's got a ton of upside in this spot. The price, like I said, it, I balk at that quite a bit because of the other guys up top that you can get to today. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're showing under 20% ownership on him right now. And I think that's uh, that's perfectly reasonable to get to. Mm-hmm. Um Outside of outside of that, like Quintana on the other side, he's been good this year. I think yeah. we're starting to see a little bit of, I mean, just kind of on a, in a general sense, we're seeing some guys really get back into their their baseball swing of things. You know, mm-hmm. outside of the last couple of years, you know, when COVID really screwed with their schedules and everything. I think Quintana might be one of those guys. Um, you know, he never had a ton of upside, doesn't mm-hmm. have a ton of whiff stuff but he suppresses contact and um, you know, he's got four or five pitches that he can use and you know, he's, he's capable. Yeah. Uh, so if you landed on him in this spot, I think it's perfectly fine. I wouldn't go out of my way to get to him um, just because the upside isn't there. Um, Detroit, while they're not very good, right. They're not hitting for any power. They have an 090 ISO as a, as a team this year That's against so lefties. Um, which is, yeah, it's really wild. Like with, with Torque and, and Baez in there, they, they should be hitting lefties, uh, better than they are. But, um, mm-hmm. you know, nonetheless, I, I think if you landed on him and you're like, oh man, this is it. I got 75 for an SP two. I think he's fine to, uh, to sprinkle in, in this spot and mm-hmm. just kind of hope for five, six innings and, and minimal damage out of him. I think it's yeah. fine outside of that. I mean, I don't really want to get to the tigers, uh, you could one off a torque if you need the money. Uh, you could get to Baez just because he has a ton of power. Uh, and Quintana won't strike anybody out. He's not going to blow it by you. So um, yeah. there's there's some upside there, but you know, not too interested. These would be um, you know tertiary pieces, if anything, for me. Yeah, if at, at torque at a cheap price, maybe I'd consider. But I don't want to pick on Quintana. What, like you said, he's yeah. always, he's always been good at limiting damage and not giving up cute like home runs. He's given up one home run this season. Um, I don't really want to stack against that guy or, or target guys against him on a huge slate. Okay. Um, let's ch- let's jump over to uh, St. Louis and Tampa Bay. And I think I ended up doing nothing in this game. This is probably a, just a nothing game for me. I do think you can def- I'm definitely considering Springs. I don't like this matchup. Um, you put Springs up against a bunch of righties. Now they haven't seen him before. Um, there's probably some, some value in that. He's, I think he's got really good stuff in real life. I just think the lefty righty thing, it's just, it's hard when you face those eight righties and, and good ones at that. He is pitching at home. He is too cheap for, I think, his talent level, but doesn't also have, uh, come, doesn't carry a great leash, hasn't re- 85 pitches, I think was his high for the season. So that's where I'm at on this one. I'm basically probably going to sprinkle in a little springs, but not, not, not anything else for me, I don't think. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Uh, I'm bullish on Springs long, longer term. He's got really, really good stuff. Uh, three, he, he does only have three pitches. So I'd prefer if he were going to, you know, be a top of the rotation type of guy, he'd have to add, um, you know, maybe a cutter or a curveball or something to mm-hmm. the, to the four seamer slider change mix. Um, the problem I see here, I agree with you today is that St. Louis, they just don't strike out. They, that that's it. You know, they are dangerous over there um and especially looking down at like arenado at 4600 today that's probably the lowest price you've seen him in i don't know five years <laughs> you know yeah. it's uh so that that's a good spot what worries me with springs um is he doesn't he's a bit of a soft tosser you know he, he's only got 93 in the tank on the fastball um he does have really good velocity delta between the fastball and the changeup, which makes the changeup such a good pitch for him um which means he, he obviously could battle against a, a very righty heavy lineup here. Mm-hmm. Um, but even still, these guys are just, they just don't whiff and mm-hmm. uh, it, it really caps his upside. So, um, mm-hmm. but all the underlying metrics look fantastic for Springs, very bullish on him long-term. Again, he's one of those guys, he's cheap enough and you're right. He's, he's definitely underpriced for his total upside. Um, but on a full slate, I think you're, uh, you're probably getting a little too FPSy um, mm-hmm. if you're, if you're, actively targeting 
springs against against the Cardinals. Just yeah. I'd, I'd rather get to a one off Arenado on the other side, you know. Yeah, I like the I, I like the one off Arenado idea, and it it is weird. DraftKings did price a bunch of guys down the last couple of days, and and it's and Arenado does seem too cheap at forty six hundred. Yeah. Um, let's talk about Atlanta and Oakland. I really like Kyle Wright as a pitcher. Um, it's hard for me when I try to go through a right school conversation when we also have Verlander, Manoa and Rodon, who I like quite a bit today. Um, yeah. It's, it's, that's just the argument, right? It's, it's a, it's a great matchup. Uh, wouldn't surprise me if he was one of the top scoring pitchers on the slate or any of that stuff, or even if he was a top scoring pitcher, but I just feel like the route is a little bit harder for him than it is those other guys to get to those, those thirties without him just having a, a, a crazy game, but he's really good. I don't know. I'm, I'm going back and forth on this one between right. Um, Scooble, Manoa, Verlander, and Rodon. I think they're all, I think, I think two of those guys probably have huge outings tonight and it could be right. Um, where do you stand with this one? And then I, I think we're going to talk about Atlanta bats, but at the same time, I'm not, I probably am going to be a little lower on them in the field, but tell me what you think about this one. I, I, I agree with you kind of all around, uh, right. He's got upside. The price here is, is too sticky. I think, um, mm-hmm. no, but you can get to him for sure. As, as pivots off of the top guys who are definitely going to carry ownership. Uh, I, I, I love his stuff. He's not the old Kyle, Wright That was just a total gas can when he was young, but right. um, he's, he's really figured it out again. He's got four pitches, even five that he can go to battle with. Uh, mm-hmm. And that that's, that's really valuable. Even if the pitches aren't great themselves, mm-hmm. um, but he's got good stuff. Problem I run into with, with Kyle, Wright Is his, uh, his profile is mostly league average for starters, right? Which is great. Mm-hmm. But he's got a he's still got a pretty significant weakness to the left side of the plate in terms of command. Uh, mm-hmm. He's he's walking 14 percent of lefties uh, this season right. and going back to, um, you know, his his younger days. So he's still yet to figure that out. Um, and that caps his upside a little bit, especially against a team like Oakland, that while they don't offer a ton of upside or collective upside, mm-hmm. they they split the lineup up with lefties and righties. And so it, it makes it a little difficult if one guy has a a pretty significant weakness to one side of the plate and he's got to work through even just three of those guys sporadically throughout a lineup, you know, so that, that would be my only concern. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, I think, you know, I built a a shell lineup and he was in it this morning. So, you know, I'm not all that concerned at uh, whatever, 18, 20% ownership that he's coming in right now. I think that's, uh, I think it's perfectly fine to get off the upper guys uh, and target right here. It's a good yeah, spot. I think, good I think spot. if you're MMEing today, I think you do want to focus on trying to get an exposure to all of these top arms because I think you're going to see some big performances. It's just hard to predict exactly who. <laughs> yep, um, for sure. Trying to do here. Yep. Um, this game is going to be a Yankees stack. Oh, sorry. I didn't talk about Atlanta hitting. Sorry. Talk about Atlanta hitting. Sorry. Yeah. That. Yeah. I, I do like the Braves. Um, I love Freddie. Like this is, uh, or not Freddie. Um, Freddie, Freddie, I love too, but he's uh, yeah, he's he's on a different team now, right? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I lost it here. Um, Olson. Um, I like yeah. Olson here. This it's it's kind of a sneaky spot. Lefty, um, lefty. yeah, kind of a sneaky spot. He hits lefties just fine, and Cole Irvin doesn't strike anybody out, and right. he he can get uh give up a little bit of power to the left side of the plate, uh, mm-hmm. and he gets barreled. So. Atlanta, I mean, I'm showing like sub 10% ownership collectively on them today. Uh, so it's a good spot for them because their main weakness uh, is, is that they strike out a Got ton. ton. Yeah, it, they like they, they whiff a ton. Yeah. And so that's a big problem for them. But when they run into somebody that's not going to blow it by them, um, that, that shoots their upside through the roof. So uh, yeah. yeah, you can definitely get to them. I, I'm obviously balking at the prices outside of uh, you know, an Ozzy Albies or maybe even an, an Ozuna, maybe Duvall down at the bottom of the list, you know, but uh, I, I think I'd prefer, I mean, you can always play Acuna, right? And Riley, but yeah. I think I'd prefer maybe some one-offs rather than full stacks, unless you decide to, you know, go kind of double mid-range or double punt on the mound. Uh, they're just kind of hard to get to given so many good arms, that you're really going to want exposure to. So that's the only reason I'd shy away from full stacking Atlanta. And that's probably going, going to be the sole reason that their ownership stays in check all day today. So 
Um, yeah, I'm kind of with you. Uh, I, I do like Atlanta, but you know, more so on Kyle Wright and, uh, and really no Oakland kind of at all for me. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think Atlanta makes more sense when, when you put it that way too, like just the, the just the, this is their, that's their problem is striking out. And now you have a pitcher who doesn't strike people out. The only thing is that, that I struggle with is to take a st- stack on a full slate against a guy who is actually, in my opinion, a good real life pitcher, yeah. not necessarily a guy who's going to be good for fantasy ever. We're not really playing him when he gets down to those six K range and he's got an, an easy matchup. Maybe we would take some shots, but he's just, he, he doesn't strike anybody out, but he is consistently, solidly working five, six innings, two runs, no, no real power giving up except for that first game he pitched this season. And he was sort of like that last year as well. So that's my only argument against them. But at the same time, you take the strikeouts out of the mix and Atlanta is all of a sudden, they look like, you know, the, they look like the Dodgers, the right? Like they're yeah, very, Dodgers. very dangerous. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you're exactly right. You just can't get to him um, at, at this price point. Um, yeah. You, you, it's just it's just unplayable when he's when he's this expensive but yeah he's a good arm he's got four or five pitches that he can that he can attack with so um Mm -hmm. that's you know with a four pitch arsenal or five pitch arsenal um i'm generally more hesitant to stack a bunch of teams against him um just because you know guys have weapons and Mm -hmm. and the more weapons that you throw at a team you know, it, uh, it decreases their collective upside as well, but the, you know, admittedly, this is Atlanta and it's one of the best teams in baseball. So, um, you can, you can definitely get to them. Yeah. I agree with everything you said. Um, let's jump over to, uh, to New York and Minnesota. I think, so we got, you know, Sands, I mean, look, they gave him a leash in that game against the, they let him throw 90 pitches, which I was a little surprised about after he wasn't even, he was, you know, he was struggling. Yeah. Um, I am, I am, I'm definitely good with the Yankees tonight. Uh, they definitely are one of my stacks that I'll be taking some shots with. I am not going to play tie on off after, I mean, he has to basically like pitch like almost flawless baseball to get as much, much work, you know, to get more than seven innings. And he's done that his last three starts. He's been absolutely almost perfect. Um, he had the, you know, the no hitter going into the, was it, it was in the eighth last time he pitched or what was, you know, I think it was the, yeah, something, it was the yeah something like that. Um, but and Tyon's a really good pitcher. I just don't think that at 9,500, I can consider him on this slate with the other top upside arms, but I do like the Yankees quite a bit. They are one of the stacks that I'm going to be fairly high on. Um, at least as a, at least getting a mini stack in there, Stanton should be back today. They're expensive, but like judge, well, judge is expensive. And if you play judge and Stanton, it's just going to be a hard, hard to fit everybody else in, but uh, definitely a stack that I'm interested in just, uh, you know, if we weren't looking at the price, the price does make it a little bit tricky. Yeah, for sure. I'm I'm 100 percent on board. I love the Yankees. I think this is probably the best spot of the day. Yeah. Um, not just from a, a fundamental perspective. Uh Sands, again, he's only got two pitches. Um, really, it's just a four seamer and a slider. And he's a soft toss and righty, and his changeup's not very good. So he's gonna have uh, <laughs> issues going up against um, you know, Judge and Stanton and and Rizzo. Like these guys walk a ton and he doesn't throw strike one, right? So it's actually one of the worst numbers in baseball in terms of strike one uh, for a starter uh, or a pr- prospective starter, right? Um, right? So that that's a big worry when you when you get involved with the Yankees, you start walking people, and then Judge and Stanton, and not just them. You got Glaber, you got Donaldson, Gallo, uh, mm-hmm. DJ's got power, Hicks has power, uh, Higgs, Trevi- like literally every one of these guys can get you. And when you start walking people, that's when the numbers get really bad really quickly. So I love the Yankees. Um, and as of right now, they're all sub 10%. Like looks like they're going to be kind of ignored today because they're so expensive. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you can figure out a, a way to get to full stacks of the Yankees, um, I, nobody's going to have it. So yeah, I was a little uh, surprised to see the Yankees um, projected run total today being below five. I would have definitely thought it would have been higher than five. Uh, yeah, it may actually have come down in the last two hours. I saw it north of five a little okay. bit this morning. So, um, you know, I th- I think it's probably I'd, – I'd take a punt at an over there. Um, mm-hmm. This is a pretty pretty good spot for them today, mm-hmm. especially with they get uh, Stanton back. Um, you know, Rizzo's playable. He's 51. He's a little expensive for mm-hmm. – for his collective upside, you know, he, he just walks too much. But... He walks too much for DFS. And this is what I always say, but, yeah. but this yeah. year, at least he's hitting tons of home runs too. I mean, in exactly. the past when he was a 25, 30 home run guy and people are playing him at five over 5k. I'm like, 
okay, well, if I'm going to do that with a guy who walks a lot, I'm going to take the guy who's going to hit 40 home runs or 35, like Muncie instead of him. You know what I mean? Exactly. I just, I just don't, I, it's, it's hard when you have guys who walk a lot outside of stacks to play them for me um, when they're, when they're that price and they will have that high of a walk rate. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I agree a hundred percent. Um, so it, it'll be tough to get to him, but if you can get there and you can make it happen, then, uh, you know, there's a ton of upside if you, if you nail your, your arms, yep. uh, in your secondary pieces there. So, um, but on the other side, like, I also like the twins, man, like, as you said, like Tyon is a good arm, but, um, his last three starts are outlier performances. Like mm-hmm. he's gone seven plus eight plus allowing very minimal damage. Um, the problem with Tyon is that he is not that kind of arm just in general you know he's got a lot of weapons as well four or five pitches even six sometimes that he'll throw in the mix Mm -hmm. um but he he's not gonna throw it by you and he he just doesn't have enough strikeout stuff to um to really make those you know extended outings persist like this isn't scherzer we're talking about you know what i mean right right uh and and 9500 uh just kind of in general that's probably too expensive for tie on mm-hmm. um especially today when there's so many other arms you can get to but you know again if you can if you can make something work like the twins like they have holes right there's um they can be attacked just just like Atlanta can be right. They, they swing and miss. Um, they got very similar collective numbers to Atlanta. So um, mm-hmm. you can get there and, and he's got some upside because tie on again, he's healthy now. And um, you know, that's really like, he's always had a ton of upside, um, but he just ran into the, the health problems earlier in his career. So, um, but I'm with you though. I would prefer not to get to him. I think he's too expensive and I'd rather get to the twins. I think you can game stack here as well. Like, uh, you can get to some Trevor Larnock. Um, you can get to, uh, some Buxton, obviously he, Buxton's well-priced today. Yeah. Um, I mean, 4,800 for Buxton. That's pretty, that's pretty rare. <laughs> yeah. Very rare. Um, and Buxton is, is generally like, I love playing him in tournaments and tournaments only because he basically hits the ball on the ground or he hits it over the wall. Right. And, you know, he's got a, exactly a really, well. exa- exactly. He's got a really low line drive rate. So, um, he's hard to you know, playing cash, for example, but it's a good spot and it's a very good price for him. So yeah, I don't mind game stacking here a little bit and kind of, you know, taking some short positions on tie on just with the expectation that that those performances can't really continue. Yeah. The one thing that's frustrated me about Buxton this season, and I've, I've always been a big Buxton guy. He's made sheets and I joke about it all the time because he's made me a fortune um, because I love the speed power combination, but where's the speed? He's not running anymore. Yep. Um, and that's, that's got me a little bit off of him. I think they're trying to keep him healthy finally, cause he keeps getting hurt, but him not running does devalue him a little bit. Although I'll still have some interest in that 4,800 price tag. Yeah. hundred um, percent. Dodgers and uh, white Sox. I'm not playing either of these pitchers. I, I think Kopech is super talented. Uh, I just, I think he's got an incredible future. It wouldn't surprise me if he went out and had a game. There's absolutely no way I'm playing him on this big of a slate against this Dodger team. And power righties have, I have absolutely no problem. I would be stacking the Dodgers if it wasn't 10 miles an hour wind blowing in and 60 degree weather when there's so many better hitting spots on the slate. I would definitely consider the Dodgers as one of my stacks. I am not going to because of those factors. Um, so for me, this game is, is mostly a stay away outside of the value we get from the White Sox. Um, if I'm going to play anybody and it's blowing out in from left center, I want to be playing lefties because that's at 10 miles an hour. That makes a difference. Um, and it's assuming that the weather stays like that and cold weather uh, there, I'll take the, the value from the white Sox and, and Freddie Freeman's price are my favorite things about this game. Freeman at 4,600 is just kind of a joke. And uh, I think Gavin cheats with the immense power, even though he's been really, really bad this year, I still believe in the actual power. He could hit it out anytime. Um, Gavin Sheets, maybe Lurie Garcia, if he's leading off as value plays, you could use Lurie Garcia might even be a cash value play if, if you wanted to consider that because of his price and there aren't other cheap shortstops. Um, but that's pretty much all I have for this one. What are your thoughts on this game? Yeah, I kind of agree. Um, I think you can get to Mitch White here and in, into like if you land on him, he's cheap enough. Um, he's stretched enough now, I think. And he, his, his stuff will play. Um, mm-hmm. The White Sox like they have just been riddled by the injury bug, you know, for the last three seasons. Um, and they really haven't been able to get any momentum going. So they've been bad 
They've got a 106 ISO, you know, split adjusted against right-handed pitching this season. Uh, 82 WRC plus. They're just not getting on base, um, and they're not hitting the ball over the wall like uh, like they can, right? Right. So I I think it's okay if you land on a Mitch White here. Um, yeah, you know, there are certainly worse plays that you could make. He's got some he's got some whiff stuff, mm -hmm. and um, you know he's a, he's a fly baller, so. It, it's hard to stack against fly ball pitchers just right. kind of in general. So um, he might give up a dinger or two, whatever, but uh, I think it's fine to, to get to him. Um, mm -hmm. If, if, if you land on it, that it'll unlock quite a bit of stuff. And he's certainly one of the guys that you could play, you know, with like a, a Whitlock who will get to uh, yeah. or something like that. Um, and, and try and stack the Yankees or full stack the Dodgers even. But yep. I'm with you. I, I prefer not to uh, full stack the Dodgers here. Um, you can because Kopech does have command problems as well. He's got a 13% walk rate this season. It's crazy. And against the Dodgers, and I'm telling you, I'm telling you, if, I did, if it wasn't a full slate and there wasn't, if it was 10 degrees cooler or warmer and, or just if there was no wind blowing in, I would be all into it. But you need home runs to win on these giant slates. And it's just, it's just to make it an extra 15% harder to hit a home run is. Yep just a little too much for me. You know what I mean? Especially 100%. when you're talking about these prices for the Dodgers where you're, you know what I mean? They're, they're, they're priced for good reason um, way through the roof, except for Freeman and then uh, Bellinger. And that's, those are the two guys I would be interested in today. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think Freddie is probably, I don't want to say he's the top play because Kopech is good. Yeah. Um, but Freddie's got an incredible batted ball profile. Uh, mm -hmm. He's a patient hitter. Um, he could get, Kopech could get beat up here today mm -hmm. uh, and I wouldn't be surprised at all. I'm with you. Um, you know, you can get to Mookie, of course, mm -hmm. uh, Trey at 56 is a little stiff. Uh, Will Smith's been terrible, but, um, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the entire lineup. Yeah. You can absolutely get to him. Um, but not for me today on this full slate to just Kopech's he's got enough that, uh, that he can navigate it, even if he does start walking the whole country. Yep. Totally agree. Um, all right. Well, we get to our other ace here and I know what people, and I have a feeling what you're going to say, well, the strikeout numbers are down trying to allow him, you know, to pitch deeper into games, getting quicker outs more, which a lot, a lot of smart pitchers, what they do as they get older. Yep. Um, I don't care. I think, that he's <laughs> a great. I think, I think he's a, I think he's right there with uh, Rodon for me. And I think that I am going to play him. He did, he did his old Verlander thing. I mean, we see this with him sometimes. Look at, look at this, look at these games though. I mean, he, he got rocked by Seattle last time. I don't think they're going to get him twice in a row like that. Um, they have been good against him. It's a little worrisome with other guys who you could spend up for. Uh, I just, I'll, I'll take the guy who's going to throw hundred pitches basically, or 95 plus pitches, basically every start almost. Um, I think the only one he didn't was Minnesota. Yeah, that's right. Um, I, I'm just very, very high on Verlander here. I, I am okay with Houston. I'm less excited to stack Houston than I think some other people, I, at least I, what I thought they would be. And then I realized their prices might make it a little tough as well. Jordan Alvarez, I think, has one of the best home run profiles against Flexen of any pit player on the slate, but he's 5,900. So this game is mostly going to be Verlander with maybe, maybe a Houston stack thrown in just because I think there's upside. But I'm just going to remind everybody that the problem with, with Flexen is he, he tends – he, he always tends to get by um, just without giving up quite enough, but that was sort of old slates where a guy, we, we needed the 14 runs. I'm not sure you need the 14 runs anymore. Um, I'm iffy with whatever it is. I, the Flexen has some, some, some really negative things going for him. He does give up some hard contact. He gives up a lot of power. Uh, so I can get behind Houston. I just, for some reason, I'm not clicking that button today. Um, and Flexen has been just basically adequate against Houston over the last couple of seasons. Uh, what is, what are your thoughts? What do you see from a, maybe a more advanced profile on both of these pitchers? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I attacked Flexen back in his Met days, literally every single start, he was terrible. Uh, and then he went over to the KBO and he introduced the cutter and the cutter has been an excellent pitch for him. And it's probably going to save his major league career to be quite mm -hmm. honest. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's really the reason that he has been so good against Houston. Um, they, they struggle with, moving fastballs you know and they struggle with the cutter and flexin he has four pitches now uh cutter like i said provides him a lot of value um you know he's a soft toss and righty but he's got four pitches to go to work with and right. he's not going to throw it by you but yeah you're you're exactly right he's he's a perfectly capable back end innings eater type of starter and i generally intra division like this um 
I, I don't enjoy stacking uh, against guys that have huge histories against each other, unless, mm-hmm. you know, we're looking at, um, right. you know, outsized perf- performances. Right. Uh, and that just doesn't happen with Houston against Flexton Houston against like Marco, on the other hand, that's a different story, but right. uh, um yeah, Flexen's perfectly capable. Now he got him pretty good in his last uh, his last start against them. Yeah. Um, they had a really really strong pitching series. Uh, uh, him, Marco, and I think it was uh, uh, I forget who it was, but they all went like seven plus. You know, mm-hmm. minimized damage. And so this that said, you know, this isn't the same Houston that we're that we're used to. Um, mm-hmm. and at the same Houston prices that we are used to, right. uh, that, that generally makes it pretty bad value. Right. Um, so yeah, I'm with you. I, some very li- like, you can always play Jordan. You can play him against anybody. He's, you know, a top yeah, five, top three power bat in the game. Yep. Um, Altuve at 5k, it's a little thin, I think, but, uh, you can get there. Michael Brantley, not the old Michael Brantley, but still mm-hmm. Michael Brantley He's still a good hitter. Um, unfortunately, really think, good, what a good real life hitter, huh? Like, yeah, he's, he's, he's really, always I love, I love him. I love him. He's, he's a guy fantastic. I would love to have on like my team and a great playoff hitter too, because you, you get a guy like that who just always makes contact, puts the ball in play and, and he's just, he's a legit, just always going to be right around 300 hitter. Yeah. He's an excellent, excellent ball player. Uh, I love watching him. The yeah. problem I think you run into Houston today is that, you know, because of the prices, like you can get to Kyle Tucker here, yeah. um, for sure at 46 it's a fine price but i think you, you run into having to play a yuli guriel at 27 and mm-hmm. uh you kind of pigeonhole yourself uh having to play a guy with without a ton of upside right. um just because he's cheap and you take up first base and there's a lot of opportunity cost at, at first base alone especially on large slates so yeah i'm uh, i'm not heavy on houston um i think alex bregman is like a, <laughs> I got some bad things to say about him. Um, just throw, in throw general, him there, throw him out there. We don't have, we have about 20 more minutes to go, but yeah, sure. Throw him out there. Yeah. No, I mean, just from a number standpoint, I think, uh, his, his price is always inflated. And I think it's, uh, I, I just don't think he's very good. You know, he's, he's an okay hitter. He doesn't strike out. So he's kind of a pest at the plate. Um, mm-hmm. but from an upside perspective, he's, he's not the same Bregman that we saw a couple of years ago when he really broke out. Right. Uh, so yeah, I really don't like getting to him. I almost never play him. Um, and it's almost, and when I do, it's almost only because of the price and, uh, it's certainly not a 4,900, you know, so, so yeah. I'm with you. Um, not much Houston for me today. I love Verlander though. At, obviously he might be a little expensive, but he's, yeah, he's he Verlander. Uh, you can get to him for sure. I think it's perfectly fine. Um, Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that's that's pretty much it for me. No, no, no real Seattle, but you can you can also uh, take some leverage stacks against him because Verlander he'll be thirty percent or so. Um, oh, we'll nobody's see. gonna play Seattle, and and if it was a smaller slate, I would be all on board with playing these guys. As it stands, I think I'd probably just want a one off or something, you know, because Verlander's gonna yeah. give up a home run in most games. I mean, he's yeah, the guy, the guy gives up tons of power. What did he give up? He had he I think it was like sixty percent of the hits he gave up two years ago were home runs. Something, something like that. It was it was crazy. Yeah, yeah. it was a he ridiculous. Four in the last time he faced this team. Sorry. Yeah, exactly. So I'm, but I'm with you. I, I would rather get to Verlander in this spot just because those kinds of performances, like they're not going to get him this bad again. It just won't happen. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if you get to, to Seattle, uh, Winker is fine. He's also been awful. Um, but I would rather get like their best hitters been Ty France and Julio this year. So, yeah. uh, they're, they're pretty thin on the upside, uh, scale as well. Uh, one-offs at, but you know, very rarely for me. Yeah, I think I think it would only be Winker for me would be the one I would consider as a one off potentially. But I, even that I'm not crazy about on this biggest slate. Yep. Let's talk about Toronto KC because I think Toronto will be the chalk. And I think that, uh, as I always say about about Brad Keller is he's he's not good, but he's not quite as bad as you want him to be. But he's been he's, he's starting to get there this year. He's, 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 he's on his way back to being bad. I yeah. do like Toronto in this spot. And I think Manoa is an incredible pivot off of the other guys we talked about. If you want to play. Manoa and White or Manoa and Scooble instead of Rodon and, and Verlander. I certainly have no problem with that. The issue I have is that KC doesn't strike out um, nearly enough. The thing yep. that, that doesn't worry me as much 
is that Manoa will find his own way to get strikeouts. I mean, he, he hasn't been as good this year. I think it's because they're, again, they're sometimes when they mold pitchers into being better real life pitchers, this is what happens. You lose a little bit of that strikeout upside because they don't want you pitching five innings with 10 Ks giving up three runs when you can, you pitch seven innings and give up two runs. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Pretty basic. So he's become a better real life pitcher and he's going to keep be- being that way, but you're going to see some weird outlier double digit strikeout performance games this season. It's just bizarre to me that he hasn't had one yet. Um, but he's a, he's an interesting pivot. It's certainly not a priority, but I do think Toronto, uh, especially depending on how their lineup shakes out, you're going to have some cheap bats in there, probably in Biggio. You're probably going to get, uh, yeah, it is a good chance you get Zimmer or Tapia or both in the lineup. Um, so you're going to have some value to play with. And, uh, you could even t- take two, two aces and, and play Toronto, uh, maybe not all of the best bats, but Vlad's only 4,700. That's kind of crazy. This, yeah. Along the same Freddie Freeman lines. I mean, that's just kind of nuts for, I'll, I'll call him the, the third, the second or third best hitter in baseball probably. Um, yeah, so I like Toronto, uh, but again, I don't want to be playing all the chalk on the, on the big slate. So what are your thoughts on this one? Yeah, I agree with you. Um, yeah, Keller, I generally just don't like attacking him. You know, he's, he's similar to Flexen for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, Flexen, obviously much better, but uh, he just doesn't get blown up a ton. Mm-hmm. Um, this year, uh, that's actually changing. His strikeout numbers are, are down considerably. Mm-hmm. Uh, he His command is off. Um, I haven't had a chance to dig in too deep into the pitch mix and, you know, release points and all that kind of jazz yet with him, but... Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, the results are just not there. Um, he's not getting barreled, you know, and he's not giving up a ton of power, but he's getting beat up pretty big. He's just allowing way too many base runners. Uh, he's not throwing strikes. Um, so he actually probably, probably has quite a bit of negative regression coming in terms of run prevention. So, um, yeah, Toronto's in a really good spot. They're definitely going to be the chalk, uh, but on a full slate, you can still stomach 15% uh, for a full stack. You know, that that's yep. perfectly fine. Plenty of spots to get different. Um, I'd say my favorite plays here would obviously be Vladdy. Um, I like Chapman as well. It, it's yeah. a sneaky, sneaky spot for him. Uh, Keller's strikeout numbers have historically always been worse to the right-handed side of the plate. So um, you can get to the righties. There's a lot of upside here. Tay Oscar is a good play. Uh, Alejandro Kirk behind the plate. Nobody ever plays him and he's just got ridiculous power. Um, so yeah, Toronto's definitely workable. I would personally, I, I hate playing Ramel Tapia. He just has no upside whatsoever. I know. I know. It's just that he's 2,400 and he makes a stack work. Yeah, exactly. And that, that'd be the, yep. And if he's in there uh, and hopefully he's not, you know, leading off or anything ridiculous, like in place of Springer, but uh, right. yeah, you can play him. Um, if, if Zimmer cracks the lineup, you can play him as well. Yep. You know, so you can make some moves to get different with Toronto if you're that high on him. Um, same thing with Manoa. I think he's too pricey mm-hmm. um, in this spot in particular. So the only th- reason I think I'd play him is if I were full stacking Toronto and I'm looking yeah. for some correlation. Also, um, you, yeah, you get, I mean, that's an important thing that we talk about. We don't talk about enough in DFS is that playing your pit when, when you really like a stack, you it does get for me anyway. If I'm going to play that stack, I'm giving the pitcher a, a boost because if you're up, if you're up by five, six runs the pitcher is just going to be able to pitch free and comfortably and not have to, yep. you know, they're not going to be dancing around people and worrying about walking anybody. They're going to attack hitters. And I'd rather guys be swinging and, and maybe hit the occasional home run off me, but I get my, you know, my two, three strikeout innings from, from, from Manoa or something. It's just much easier to, it happens much more often if you have that five, six run cushion. Yeah, absolutely. I'm with you. Um, so that's, that'd be the only reason I'd, I'd really try to get to Manoa uh, is if I were, you know, eat four or, or four or five stacking uh, the Jays with him, but, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't like t- attacking the Royals. You know, they've got, uh, wit has always been a pest. Um, but now they've got the other wit who is, this kid can absolutely rake. Oh, he's um, a, he's a player. Salvi is back. MJ, uh, Melendez behind the plate. He can hit uh, Hunter Dozier is coming to his own in the last couple seasons as well. So this is not the same Royals as it used to be either, you know, so they're, they're pesky and, um, yeah, you don't want to play him, right? Uh, it's certainly not in this spot, but uh, yeah, it shies me away from Manoa a little bit just due to that. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I got you totally on that one. Um, so let's talk a little bit about this, the situation here, okay? Um, this we're in Philadelphia. I, I do think Suarez has enough upside in general, and this is just a little bit. He's just been struggling this season. He hasn't been quite as good. Um, 
he gets he has he gets serious control issues at times and i think it sort of kills him i still always think of him as a guy though with upside because when he's on he can really i mean he can make you miss um he's not been as good at it this year i i also think that the phillies were are kind of interesting intriguing to me now i know a little bit about alexander i mean you have a 29 year old rookie who looked absolutely awesome in his first start but he only struck out three batters i'm not going to play these guys I'm just trying to figure out how viable I think the Philly stack is. Cause I do, I did initially want to target this spot because it's not like we're talking about some top ACE young arm. He was really good in the minors uh, before he came up, which is why he's up here, but it's, it is just feels weird to, to, to this, this run total is only 4.25 against a guy who's a 29 year old rookie coming off of his first start, which was a good start, but it was against the Cubs and it was, he had three strikeouts uh, Philadelphia. You eliminate the strikeouts. I kind of like their upside here. So what, what do you think about this game? Yeah, this is interesting. I actually dug into Ranger Suarez recently, and uh, I can't touch him. Mm -hmm. And this is solely due to pitch mix. Uh, Last year and the whatever was, you know, when he went on his his just mad, mad strikeout run with a 28% K rate or whatever, um, he was using the four seamer and using the the slider quite a bit. Now, for whatever reason, he has almost completely ditched the four seamer and the slider this year, and he's gone straight to the sinker. And that's why his strikeout stuff is, is gone. Um, and that's why his command is gone because he's changed up his repertoire. Mm-hmm. So that really worries me. I'm not touching him uh, originally, like truth be told, I saw, I saw him today. I was like, Ranger, he's the best play of the day. And then I, I dove into the numbers like, whoa, did the major red flags. I wouldn't touch him uh, until he figures out the pitch mix um the k stuff is just not there he's got a k k rate under 20 percent this year a walk rate at 10 percent not throwing strike one he doesn't have any chase in him anymore like it no i know of, even when he doesn't walk terrible. people he, like like let's take that start against the dodgers the the the, the last time on, on may 20th i watched that game and i think i think every hitter in that game had a three ball count to them at some point i mean yep. there were 84 pitches in three innings and he only yep. walked two guys but he had a three when you have a three ball count on everybody the, the, the hitters can just sort of like tee off and waste another pitch i mean it's um yeah so yep. i mean honestly like milwaukee's a team that they don't have a lot of their best hitters available or a lot of their high upside hitters available adamas renfro arias even narvaez behind the plate but this team, which shocked me when I looked at it yesterday, they have the second most home runs in baseball uh, of any team in, in Milwaukee. And I don't think I'm going to play them, but I certainly wouldn't mind if you wanted to play a one-off of McCutcheon or Taylor. Any, any interest in the hitting for you on Milwaukee? I love Milwaukee in this spot. Oh, like, okay. I, yeah, like I am so bearish on Ranger Suarez right now. This sinker is a terrible okay. pitch just in general. Um, there's been a, you know, a, a huge sort of uh, shift uh, away from the sinker in the last several years because it's flat and if it's bad it, it floats and that leads to a lot of power from both sides of the plate mm-hmm. so he clearly doesn't have a good sinker right now and mm-hmm. uh you're right milwaukee is a very good baseball team like they're 10 games over 500 right now and mm-hmm. um you know they got a lot of power and they're very dangerous. And actually, they're supposed to get Willie Adamas back today. So, oh, okay. Um, it wasn't aware yeah, of yeah. Now, unfortunately, uh, Urias, he, well, you always, you also want to play him. He's got a ton of power and a ton mm-hmm. of upside. Yeah. So he came plays. over. Yeah. What well, he came over in the Zach Davies trade from, yeah. from San Diego a couple years ago. Um, yeah. This kid is a stud. He was a top prospect. Yeah. And unfortunately, though, both he and Adamus are only shortstop eligible. So if Urias plays, I think he's got like a wrist right now or something. Um, if he plays, he'll probably stick him at third base, at which point DK will probably adjust his uh, position eligibility again. But you can't play them both today. Right. Um, I would, uh, yeah, I would play Adamus. I would play, like McCutcheon is one of the best plays of the day. Mm-hmm. Um, you can even play Yelich, who's, may or may not be washed uh you know you can absolutely get to milwaukee i love them here um and to your question earlier with the phillies i like the phillies as well now Mm -hmm. they've they've kind of got a shot in the arm after uh after girardi got canned um Mm -hmm. and for whatever reason like that's narrative don't don't play that regularly but uh it works sometimes you know so uh yeah i i think this is another game that you can fully stack um and get to both sides because alexander uh he's got good stuff but uh, the prices on the phillies are, are too good 
and yep. um you know his pitch mix as well he he's heavy heavy sinker guy uh and you know so we'll we'll see how those pitches develop for him but um just the sinker in general is just a bad pitch and yep. there's a lot of variance with it so uh anybody that's heavy on a sinker outside of like marcus stroman kind of guys mm -hmm. um yeah i i think it's uh perfectly viable to to attack so i like both sides here um and you know i would like their ownership's going to be very very low on both sides so uh yeah. i think it's a good spot i like it i think that's a, a good call um all right uh this is a spot that i'm going to go on the opposite opposite end of you possibly because you 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 want to talk about whitlock so i'll let you do that <laughs> i am thinking about playing the angels tonight um yeah there you go do. so i'm on the angels personally <laughs> I'll tell you, uh, you know, what. I strike out angel team with a lot of power and you take away the strikeout risk as much with the guy like Whitlock, who really just, I mean, his, his strikeouts were, were, I mean, he did strike out nine of these guys in the last time he faced them. Um, but I, I'm just, I'm just, I, I think this is a spot where I could see him having some trouble. Uh, we've seen his control get a little bit better when he's been a little bit, you know, it's been, it's been sporadic early in the year. And I just think that the angels as an unowned offense against uh, Whitlock, who I think is, people got really, really high on and then sort of jumped off. And what do you think, what do you think about Whitlock in general? And then what is your thoughts on the, both these teams tonight? I love Whitlock in general. Uh, like, I think he has excellent stuff and mm -hmm. I think he's probably, I mean, he's definitely the best arm on, on the Red Sox roster. And that includes sale, you know, mm -hmm. like I think he's got the best stuff out there. Um, that said, I, I'm, I've also been looking for a bottom on the angels recently. Uh, I played them last night and <laughs> obviously that didn't work out, but um, yeah, in general, I think uh, Whitlock is, is going to have incredible upside and, and you're going to be paying nine, 10 K for him. If not at the end of this year, absolutely by next year. Mm -hmm. So, um, but you're right. He does have some vulnerabilities. Um, the strikeout stuff is still there. And the ground ball to fly ball ratio the you know, the batter ball profile still looks strong, but he's giving up a little bit uh, too much hard contact for my liking. Just in general, I wish he had a bit more chase in him, um, you know, and a, a really devastating out pitch, but mm -hmm. the, the slider right now, it's, it's basically league average for him. Um, but he'll dial that in eventually. And, uh, and he's a, he's a really, really good arm. He's got a ton of upside longer term. Um, so I love him. And I think this is a spot where you probably should be getting to both sides because um, the angels are, are not this bad. Like they're bad, but they're not this bad. And trout, um, you know, he's going to bust out at some point. And when everybody is bearish on trout, that's when you want to hop on because it, he could very well hit three dingers tonight and just yeah. blow everybody out of the water, you know? So I've also been looking for a bottom on the angels. Um, I think it's coming soon and it very well could come tonight. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. The, price I, I, on, the, the only yeah. thing that was getting alarming to me about Whitlock is as they've let him pitch deeper into games and it's like an extreme example of it, the strikeout rate has gone completely away. Um, he struck, he pitched six innings, his last start, he had zero strikeouts, which is almost impossible yeah. to do in modern day baseball, four strikeouts and six innings, the previous game. It's just as they, as they're trying to like, you know, give him a little bit more leash. And I, and that's my argument why, uh, why I'm a little worried about playing him too, is that they don't seem to want to let him pitch. They let him throw 80 pitches a couple starts ago. I don't seem to let him, let him go deep. Um, and, and at the same time, I think you can make a good argument for both these offenses tonight. I don't like playing Boston outside of Boston as much in general, just because it's such a huge boost for them to play in that little joke of a park that, I mean, mm -hmm. like I yeah. say, I was, you know, you look at the doubles leaders in baseball by team, it's always going to be the Red Sox. Number one, it's yeah. always going to be because of, uh, because of the monster, the green monster. But um, Detmers is another one who's had, had some strikeout, serious strikeout issues so far this season. Hasn't, hasn't really shown flash much upside in that realm. And you have a Boston lineup with a bunch of good, righties who are specifically good against lefties so I, I can see an argument for both sides what do you like in the hitting and then we'll try and move on quickly because I gotta get on another call in a couple minutes yeah sure um I do like Boston as well uh, I'm also uh kind of low on on Detmers just because of the the whiff stuff uh and Boston that's that's really their weakness if you can mm -hmm. attack them with uh with guys with high velo and and whiff stuff then um I mean Waka um really showed last night that Whitlock, you know, could get there. Um, yep. So I think that, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. You can, you can play all sides of this game. I would stay away from Detmers. Uh, I'd be more on Boston. Um, but again, it's not a, not a huge priority for me. Yeah. 
Yeah, I gotcha. Um, Mets and uh, San Diego. I, I look. You have Phil Cuzzy who's supposed to be doing this game, which is the only reason I'm considering it. The Mets are a lineup that actually does scare me. Yeah. Um, the, the highest on base percentage of any team in the league for against a guy like Darvish who can occasionally get a little wild. Uh, that's that's not always a great recipe. But with Cuzzy behind the plate, it does give me give a little boost to Darvish who's 8900. But it is not is not so far below the top tier guys to where I'm not going to consider him in some of my mixes. So that's that's basically all I have from this game. I was even everybody wants to try and pick on Tywin Walker all the time. That's fine. I'll just point out that he's given up two home runs this season in nine mm-hmm. starts and hasn't actually been bad at all. So I, I am just going to be on Darvish in this game. Yeah, um, I I don't like Darvish here in this spot. He's historically always given up too much power for my liking to the left side of the plate. Um, mm-hmm. and, I mean, it's not ridiculous but uh you know he's got a 175 iso to the left side and he's a fly baller to the left side so um and he he also since he's got 12 pitches that he throws uh (laughs) has has problems throwing strike one sometimes so that leads to a bit of a you know trouble spots for him um so in this spot i I, i'm not going near the mets um Mm -hmm. this lineup is dangerous very very dangerous as we saw last night so um yeah Taiwan Walker on the other side, I do like him at 7,200. I think it's a fine spot to get to. Uh, the Padres have also been terrible. Um, they're just not uh, not there with the upside yet this year. I think you can, if you landed on him as an SP2, I think that's fine. Um, but yeah, I, I also don't like attacking him. He's He's got five pitches and, um, you know, he's he can work around a lot of stuff. So nothing really for me in this game. If anything, I'm getting to Mets. Um, but I don't think Darvish is going to be owned highly enough. Uh, to really warrant, you know, full stacking and attacking, uh, you know, a really good arm in Darvish. So uh, not too much for me, probably just some one-offs, um, mm-hmm. maybe a Lindor, good from the left side of the plate, a, a Brandon Nimmo, I think that's fine, but uh, that's probably it. Yeah, I think that Voight's price at some point, the guy still has power. I, I, I could take a oh, shot yeah. with Voight in the middle of the lineup at 2,800 or whatever it is. For sure. Um, and then this last game is, I, I, look, I think some people – I know it sounds nuts. I know you think it's nuts. And I know that this is what this is. <laughs> I, I'm just gonna I'm, I'm going to take a weird gamble in a couple lineups where I just do the double pay spend down on a, on a marquee and, and Bradish. The only thing about marquee that the one thing I like about this is that and he's been terrible. Everything looks terrible. But he's let me just remind everybody he's 5300. Yeah. There's not another pitcher in the 5k 6k range that's going to throw 100 pitches most or, or 90 plus pitches almost every start. And that's that's what at least that that in itself presents a little bit of upside. Um, he has a long history with the giants, uh, mixed results. Uh, it's not an exciting spot, but at 5,300, if you wanted to pay down, maybe this would be a better one to almost even play it at Coors, but I'm just open to it. And I love Rodon. I think that he is, I think he is probably the, the, the simplest answer for the best option on the slate. Um, even though he's really struggled his last few outings, it's just this Rocky team away from Colorado and 50 degree weather. Um, that's sort of why I'm interested in both pitchers and I'm not going to take the hitting on a 12 game slate even though I could make a great argument for the giants. I, I just think that the weather being in the, being in the fifties, when you're by far the worst hitting conditions on the slate, forget the wind blowing out. It means nothing in San Francisco. Um, I, I just, I'm just on the pitching. How about you? I know you're not going to play marquee, but no, definitely not. Um, I yeah. think he, yeah. Uh, his, but maybe I'll get a Hunter green on you. Like he did yesterday. Yeah. Right. No, you're, you're absolutely right there. You, you nailed it. Um, no, not for no Marquez for me. He's his release point is off. Like he's really, really searching and he hasn't found anything. Um, yeah. So yeah, nothing for me, even if he's 5,300, the giants are just too, too good. Now it, it, it's this kind of spot where I would, um, you know, on a smaller slate, not tonight, but I would uh, just attack, um, attack Colorado and attack Marquez uh, because the giants are fantastic. This is a good, good baseball team over here. The record probably doesn't show it just yet, but um, like these guys are going to explode and and they're going to give the Dodgers a run for their money in the division again this season. So um, no, no Marquez for me. I, I think it's fine. He's 5,300. And really when you, when you get down to it, uh, price for, for pitchers is the most important metric <laughs> a lot yep. of the time in DFS, right? So it's fine uh, in 50 degree weather, he could absolutely get there. And if you're looking for a bottom on, on a guy that has, you know, historically performed well, um, you know, there's no better price bottom than 5,300, right? So I think it's perfectly fine. Uh, Yeah. But I'm with you on the, on the hitting side. Uh, I want really not a lot of the giants. um, Yeah. The giants prices do make it like almost impossible, right? 
Yeah, on a full slate, you just can't get to Wilmer Flores at 5,400 or Jock at 55. <laughs> it's just it's nonsensical. You have essentially um, essentially platoon players. I mean, and in some sense, and they're good ones. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Jock still doesn't always play against lefties, and Wilmer doesn't always play against righties. Yeah, <laughs> because... yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, no, it, they're just way too expensive. Um, that said, like nobody's going to play them. So if you're just yeah. as bearish on Marquez as I am, then you can absolutely get to him because he could – very well get torched for seven and, and two and a third tonight. You know, it's yeah. very, very within range. So uh, it's certainly possible in, in, you know, in big MME stuff, I think it's probably warranted to get there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm also more so on Rodon. But again, I'd be careful here. The Rockies against right-handed pitching, they they also have one of the lowest strikeout rates in baseball. Um, well, but Rodon's a lefty though. Uh, left-handed pitching. I mean, yeah, yeah oh, my, my, my fault. Uh, yeah. My, um, yeah, but I, I'd be careful there. They they don't strike out a lot. They don't have a ton of power, and obviously a lot of their numbers are inflated by you know their their on base stuff inflated by playing at Coors a little bit. But uh, this again, I'm with you away from Coors. They uh, you know their their upside just like goes through the floor. So um, yeah. you can definitely play Rodone. Uh, he can absolutely get there. I think he's fine up top, um, and no no reason to to go near the Rockies. Yeah, and if you his numbers at home, Rodon, are just absolutely absurd in San Francisco. Yeah, um, absolutely. All right, well, hey, man, I, I hate to rush out of here. A great job. I really appreciate breaking it down with you. we got to make sure to do this at least once a week for now. And uh, we'll be having some new exciting stuff coming from, from uh, Justin on uh, the site. And, uh, Justin, anything else before we get out of here? No, yeah, man. Um, get, get a bunch of these top pitchers today and, you know, try and get – get unique with some stacks. Uh, I think there's a lot of really, really good spots to, uh, to play in tournaments tonight. So good luck, everybody. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Justin. And uh, good luck, everybody. We'll hopefully somebody have somebody from true DFS take something down. Good luck.